what's up beautiful people don't judge my bun I know I look crazy um I have filmed six videos that have all been destroyed or messed up so I've been gone not because I haven't been consistent but because my videos like you know the devil is working y'all ever since I decided I want to change the channel and do the different uh parts of my life and kind of be more authentic with you guys now I'm having all these technical issues so we are going to keep pushing through anyway though because that's why we're here so I'm going to get straight to the point of the video and today's video is basically about how to break the generational curse of disciplining your children as well as finding a healthy way to discipline your children so I'm going to do a small backstory and then we're going to get into the five tips that I think will be helpful with you disciplining your children because we are in this together I'm struggling and I want to basically show you what my therapist and I talked about because your girl needs deliverance but um anyways so for my particular backstory uh, there's a generational curse between mother and daughter on my mom's side of the family and there is a massive strain slash tumultuous relationship between like my mother and her mother and honestly me, my siblings and my mom. Um, that's due to things that have been done to us by our mother and they have not gotten healed, they have not been properly addressed and so Basically, it just causes a strain on the child because you do things to them that hinder their connection with you. And then as the child gets older, there's still a divide between you and them. So I was told as a young kid that we had a generational curse between mother and daughter. And it was always talked about, but it was never broken. And so a couple years back, I was reading... Uh, the Bible and God gave me a verse and I'm searching for this verse but uh, God gave me a verse that basically said that I will break generational curses and so I'm a person who's very upfront and honest with myself and so I'm evaluating my relationship with my daughter and I see similar discrepancies um, that are happening in between the two of us that will result in me having the exact same relationship that I have with my mom or that she has with her mom. So I want to break that curse because it has not been broken. And so basically I have been just trying to work on all the areas of my life and allow, allow God to come in and heal me and nourish me and restore the parts of me that are not walking in his light. And I was talking to God and God was revealing to me that the way I discipline my daughter in particular is not how she would want me to. And so I went to my therapist broken like, hey, I don't know what to do. What, what do I need to do? And so she gave me five tips that I found to be absolutely helpful. And um, I'm going to re read those uh, to you as well as like give you a little bit of explanation to each point. But if you're a parent, I really, really think that this will be helpful for you. So keep watching. So the very first tip that my therapist suggested was to never discipline your children when you are angry. And I had to admit to her that I tend to um, punish right in the moment of me being upset. And that leads to a harsh, hard personality towards my daughter. It leads to a sense of... Um, disconnect it seems unloving it seems um you know overly harsh but depending on like what the situation is and so for me I never thought about that and so when I was talking to her uh she said you need to discipline um your child with love that was her solution and I said I'm gonna be honest with you I don't know what that looks like I don't know how to be gentle I don't know how to be kind I don't know how to discipline my child in love I didn't receive that and so I need help on what that looks like and the first tip was to do not discipline your children when you are angry to cool down and then the second tip was to look your child in the eye and have a conversation with them and explain to them why they're getting disciplined so these two steps in combination with each other are showing Christ like love when we are um, doing something outside of God's will sometimes he will discipline us that's because we are either too hard in our ways or whatever the reasoning is he's trying to center you back but typically 
when God's disciplining us, it's a small voice. It's a gentle voice. It's a kind voice. It's a loving voice that's saying to us, hey, this is outside of my will. Come back to me. And so as parents, our job is to model what Christ looks like to our children. And Christ is not screaming and acting the fool because your child lied. Like God doesn't do that to you. And so we need to offer our kids the same respect and grace that God gives us. And so we can do that by um, not disciplining them when we're angry and then looking in them in the eye and telling them what they did wrong. Like, hey, this, you are lying. That behavior is unacceptable. And because I have to teach you that that behavior, behavior is unacceptable, this is the consequence that you are about to receive because of that behavior. But look them in the eye and talk to them like they're a person, like they're on your level. Uh, the third tip is to find the best discipline style for your child. For me personally, um, I think, especially in today's society, giving your child a spanking can be considered like child abuse. So I, I read the Bible and the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. And there is a very, very thin line about whether abuse and spanking your child. So my solution in this is that five and under or even eight and under is a good uh, state in your child's life to give them a spanking. That may be like with the little pop. Um, but I think that kids are moldable between the ages of zero and seven. And so you just give them a spanking. It doesn't have to be so painful and lose a, leave a mark for them to process what is going on. I think by doing a firm, you know, like tap. Another recommendation I have, which is outside of the five points, is to not hit them directly with your hand because that is unloving. Um, but to use like a wooden spoon and our, our pastor calls their wooden spoon when their kids were younger, Mr. Spank. So I thought that was a good idea. But like my son's two and he is definitely in that terrible two stage. And so I have been popping him with a little spoon, not a bunch of pops, just like, you know, no, that's not appropriate. Um, I think when they're young, you don't have to hit them hard. They, they feel the sting enough that they are going to register in their brain that that whatever they're doing is not OK and that they're going to get disciplined for it without you having to be abusive, without you having to hurt them, leave marks and honestly scar them. Um, I think after a certain age, you have to learn your child's discipline style, whether that's taking away their iPad, whether that's giving them uh, some time out in the corner. I think every child is different in that every child should be disciplined according to their disciplining needs as far as like what works with them the best. Sometimes spanking your kid is traumatic for them and that may not be the best form of punishment. Maybe their best form of punishment is time out. So I don't care how many kids you have, try to learn each child and find what's most effective to them. That way you're not um, scarring them, honestly. So that was outside of the tip, but I think learning your children's uh, disciplining style will be helpful. Another thing was Number four was sometimes disciplining your child may happen the next day. So maybe you aren't able to calm down that day. You need to discipline them the next day. And maybe they do something and you say to them, go to their room. But going to their room isn't exactly punishment because, you know, there may be a TV in their room or toys in their room or whatever. And so the next day may roll around. The punishment you gave them of putting them in a room really wasn't a punishment. And they say to you, hey, can I go to Sally's house? You can be like, no, and you can't go to Sally's house because yesterday you lied to me, you um, were disrespectful, and so your punishment for that is not being able to have a play date with Sally. So that's uh, something that could be helpful if you're not able to calm down or you just don't know in that particular situation what would work, finding discipline that you may use the next day. And the very last point, which was very big to me, is that we need to stop disciplining our children for mistakes. As an adult, if you drop a glass and you break the glass, you are not getting disciplined. As an adult, if you make a mistake, you're not getting a discipline. You're going to be like, okay, like, dang, I broke the glass. I'll try not to do that again. So I think a lot of times as adults, we discipline our children for um, breaking something, for doing an honest mistake. And so if your child has genuinely made a mistake, then you just let them know like it's okay you broke this let's try to be more careful next time like let's not um run around the house next time um if they were running around the house and that's rule you already have that's a fair discipline but if they just genuinely made a mistake spilled their juice on you whatever 
they don't need to get disciplined for that. Like, it's a mistake. We have mistakes. They make mistakes. We're all human. And so I think we need to humanize our children and allow them to make mistakes because we don't want them to live in fear towards us. They, we will need to be understanding and loving. Back to how God is loving and kind to us. We need to do the same thing for our children. So those were the five things that we talked about in my session that I thought were extremely powerful, that could be extremely helpful, that I am going to be using in my own new parenting style. But um, I think this is a taboo subject that not everyone likes to talk about um, because of like the issue of people in this cancel culture of like what's abuse and what's not abuse so i just think that the biggest thing is to discipline your children in love by not being angry when you're disciplining them by making eye contact with them and communicating to them as to why they're getting disciplined and then also be an understanding parent to not discipline them when they are making a mistake so I just want to share what I learned with you guys because it made a big difference for me. I hope this is helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm so excited to be getting back into this. I hope you guys have a great day. Love you.